Okay, so here we are a couple weeks out of Christmas, and we want to talk about how to get through the holidays, what we need to do to make sure that they're safe, they're fun, and everyone has the holiday that they deserve. So first off, um, we want to talk about understanding that food holidays can cause stress, and it's more than just the food. So having holidays, having big events with family and, and extended family that may or may not understand the PWS diagnosis may just be too much for you and your child. And that's okay. So we want to make sure that everyone's set up for success, that you know who's going to be there, you know what food's going to be there, and you know how the supervision is going to go. We all, of course, we know that that extra food, different food, that causes stress. But what else causes stress is just cha the change in the schedule, and the higher expectations for behaving, right? For for meeting that expectation of holding it together through this really big event, and that's a lot of pressure. And a lot of times, people with PWS have a fear of failure, and they'll often have a big incident or episode or event right before this big event's going to happen because they don't feel like they can actually hold it together throughout the event. So they just kind of blow it right before it happens. And then all the pressure is off of them. You want to make sure that they know that they don't have to go, that if, if it's feeling like it's too much, if there's too much pressure, if the expectations are too high, that they can say, I don't want to do this and that it's going to be okay and that you have something else planned if they don't want to go to this, this big event. Know that when you raise your expectations, you're raising their anxiety. And of course, we want to have high expectations for all of the kids, but we want to make sure that we do it slowly, we do it predictably, and we don't do it during times where we are stressed ourselves. Um, and oftentimes when you see inflexibility or rigidity that looks like they're having um, a behavioral issue or they're being manipulative, um, and, and it's usually not the case, it's usually that there is just so much going on and so much off of routine that they just can't hold it together. So what do we do about it? Let's talk about that. You want to teach neuroplasticity early and often. And what I mean by that is you want to make sure that you're giving your child the experience of being flexible in small increments. You want to teach them that even if the outcome isn't what they expected, it's still okay. But again, this is something that has to happen all the time, starting from a very early age, or as, as, even if they're a little older now, you can definitely start now. And you want to teach them that the exact same thing isn't going to happen every day. And of course, we want to stick to routines. But if you start seeing that your child will only drink out of this one particular cup, or if they have to wear their Superman pajamas every night and no other pajamas. You wanna stop that when you start seeing that it's becoming really rigid because it might be really hard to find those same pajamas that they're wearing at five when they're 15 and 25 and 35. And if you don't stop it early, it really will become a problem later on. So you wanna teach that they have the ability to have a flexible brain and um, they can still be successful when things change or get a little bit off course. Um, always have an out, have a plan B. So if you are going to the big family event, make sure that you have an out, that there's someone else with you that can take your child home if, if need be um, and have a plan B. So if you can't do that big event, you can still do something else that's just, that's just as fun. Um, have options away from that big event, um, have a little Christmas or some families call it Christmas Junior, where you have um, a, a family get together, but it's with um, less people for a shorter amount of time, and you can guarantee the food security, get most of the presents out of the way early, because sometimes that's a huge uh, source of anxiety. So you can say we're getting all your presents 
you know, two weeks before Christmas, then on Christmas day, you'll get one or two presents and then it's over. So then all those presents that they've been waiting for and getting anxious about, that's out of the way. Um, and creativity is key. You have the holidays and, and celebrate them, but make sure that that wherever you're going, whoever you're going with is PWS aware, right? That they're sensitive to the needs of this diagnosis. And, and I think most importantly of all, is to schedule time for you to get away every day, even if it's for 10 minutes, even it's, if it's 10 minutes where you can sit in the shower and, and not think about anything and not have anyone interrupting you. And I know that can be really hard, a lot of single parents out there, but if there's any way for you to, to get some support, to have some resources for you to just have a few minutes a day to do something that you like, whether it's being in the car and listening to really loud music or doing whatever you need to do to just take that time for yourself. Because as, as always, and you all know this, if, if you're not good for yourself, you're not good for anybody else. So you want to make sure that, that during this time that you're really prioritizing self-care and know that if all else fails in a couple of weeks, things go back to normal. Um, and we won't have to, to go through this really high anxiety until Halloween next year, and then get through those eight weeks. Um, if you want any further tips, if you um, have something that you need to talk about or or um, want to discuss some some potential um, uh, ways to, to do this a little bit differently than you've been doing it, definitely reach out to us. We're happy to talk to you. And I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday.